Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real world self publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now, let's get on with today's show. If you self publish journals on Kindle Direct Publishing, listen up. Back in 2019, I defined low content print books as those that aren't traditional text based content books. I lumped coloring books, workbooks, puzzle and crossword puzzle books, and journals in that group. But in 2022, Kindle Direct Publishing, or KDP, redefined that category. Here's what low content books are now. When I published my Looking Questions journal in 2013 and my 101 Business Writing Prompts in 2015, I fretted that KDP might reject my books because they didn't have enough content, even though they had text-based content discussing the topic, providing instructions, and more. But they both passed, and I'm still selling both of them. In fact, to date, my 101 Business Writing Prompts uh, Workbook and Journal is my third top-selling book of all my books on Amazon. As the self-publishing industry matured, a lot of authorpreneurs uh, cashed in or tried to cash in with publishing journals on KDP that were more like blank book notebooks. Just pages with lines or not and maybe a graphic or other visual elements to dress it up a bit. This is what I call no content. Nothing wrong with no content books, but should they be allowed to be published on KDP? And where do they belong on Amazon? In mid-May 2022, Amazon and KDP started defining self-published journals, notebooks, and planners as low content. Puzzle books, coloring books, and workbooks will continue to be categorized as regular books. What's the key difference? Repetitive content. A journal, planner, or notebook would generally have nearly identical content on most, if not all, pages. Or they might even have blank pages. Books such as coloring books and workbooks do not have repeating content. Will KDP take down existing books that would now be defined as low content? That's unknown. But I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. Too many listings for low content books with low sales could be putting a drain on the system and providing a poor customer experience. I even saw some low content book listings where the titles were stuffed with keywords and book details. One of the book titles was almost a paragraph long. Going forward, when you publish a low content book, you must check the low content box when you publish on KDP. If you don't, your book manuscript will be rejected. What this means is that KDP is now going to be scrutinizing your uploaded manuscripts for low content markers, such as repetitive content and low volume of genuine content. It is unclear from KDP's new support documentation on low content books as to what will be done with the existing low content books. What's currently unclear is what product category will be used for these self-published journals if they are not classified as books. Will they be lumped into the larger group of blank journal and notebook product listings? That's a completely different product category than books and a competitive one too. When customers shop for journals on Amazon, they'll likely type in journals in the Amazon search bar. I would safely guess that no customer will ever type in low content in the Amazon search bar. With the categorization in flux, it means that these publishers will have to pour more resources into marketing, promotions, and advertising on Amazon or elsewhere just to make sales. In the past, KDP would provide a free ISBN, International Standard Book Number, to all print books even low content ones. With the new low content definition, the ISBN situation on KDP has changed. Low content books will not have an ISBN number when you publish them on KDP unless you provide your own ISBN. KDP will no longer provide free 
ISBN numbers for low content books. However, all products on Amazon are assigned an ASIN, an Amazon Standard Identification Number, number. A retail type barcode for Amazon's use will be added to your low content book cover that you self-published on KDP unless you provide your own ISBN number. So I'm sure Amazon probably has a special arrangement with Bowker, who is the ISBN agency in the United States. If they paid the posted retail price for ISBNs that they get for their self-publishing customers, they'd probably pay currently about $1,500 for a package of 1,000 ISBN numbers. And that's just for the numbers, not including the ISBN barcodes. So let's say a single self-publisher uploads hundreds of times per month, which is not unusual. That could cost Amazon hundreds of dollars per month for each self-publisher's uploads. And if there are scant sales for each title, it's a loss for Amazon. So you can see why they want to get this situation under control. If you absolutely want to have an ISBN assigned to your low content book, you'll have to buy it from Bowker in the United States or the ISBN agency that serves your home country. That could cost you a chunk of cash. As I'm posting this, the cost for a single ISBN is $125. A package of 10 is $295 and 100 are 575. Do the math. It's obvious Amazon did the math. Actually, I don't think this no ISBN issue will be much of a problem for most low content publishers. It's on Amazon as print on demand, and that's all they care. On a related note, if you don't provide your own ISBN number for your low content book, it will not be available for expanded distribution to libraries, schools, and bookstores. This makes sense for libraries and schools who wouldn't be purchasing blank books anyway. However, I think there will be some crying and moaning about it not being available to bookstores, like they even had a chance of being sold there anyway. Another change for the low content book category is that there will be no look inside feature preview on the product listing page. Customers would see the same repetitive page over and over again, so this is no loss for the customer. A plus content would be a way to display a repetitive page design. It's unclear if there will be any restrictions on A plus content for these low content book listings, not either now or in the future. So you want to keep checking KDP support documentation for updates on the a content situation. As I've talked about before, the perfect bound books that can be produced by print on demand on KDP are not ideal for journals and blank notebooks. They do not lay flat, uh, which doesn't provide a good user experience. As I found with my 101 Business Writing Prompts workbook, increasing the book's trim size, this is about a letter page size, can help a write-in book lay flatter, though not perfectly flat. Even though hardcover editions often have a more lay flat capability, the new KDP hardcover editions aren't the answer. Unlike traditional case binding that has signatures that are stitched together to create a book block, the KDP hardcovers appear to be more like perfect bound with a hardcover attached. Let me show you how that works, and this might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'm going to try. <laughs> On the traditional case bound hardcover book that I have here, you can see tiny little booklets at the spine base, and that's what allows these books to lay flat. But with this KDP hardcover, you can't really see, unless they're very, very tight, you really can't see those, what they call signatures, and so it does not lay flat. Spiral bindings, which KDP currently does not offer, are an ideal format for user experience with write-in journals and notebooks, but it is an expensive format even if you're using self-publishing platforms that offer spiral coil-bound uh, books such as Lulu. 
and that means lower profits and royalties because the price you can charge has a ceiling, and this means lower profits and royalties for you. Because producing a lay flat journal or blank book is so expensive, many low content publishers ignored the user experience and went with KDP print on demand. You have to wonder if the poor user experience also factored into Amazon and KDP's decision with these low content policy changes. I have to admit, I'm surprised it took Amazon this long to do this. I've been seeing the low content and no content get rich quick publishing schemes for a while. I can't imagine Amazon's advanced algorithms and AI weren't able to detect these books lack of genuine content during the review process. This is a good move for Amazon in terms of their cost and helps them provide the best possible experience for customers. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast app you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you like the YouTube video better, you just have to subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so you get an alert when a new video is up. I would appreciate it if you shared the audio or the video with your friends on social media. My self-published books are available on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is go to one of those sites, type in my name, Heidi Thorne, and a list of all available titles will be shown. My website is HeidiThorne.com if you'd like to connect with me. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.